Hello YouTube, D-Man Biker here again uh, with another tank showcase. Today I'm just going to be showing you my uh, newest addition to the fold. This is the MBT-9 and uh, basically my, my goal when creating this tank was to uh, create something that solves the uh, the real prevalent issues in some of my uh, more successful tanks such as the uh, SH-21 of course. Um, this tank is just getting old. This is my MBT-6, so this is four full iterations of main battle tank past this thing, and it's really starting to show its age. Uh, I discovered a major weak point um, in the frontal armor right uh, along this here. If you shoot the uh, the seam here, it's possible to get a uh, full frontal penetration in only a few shots. You have to hit the seam right on, which is difficult, so I had to add this extra plate here to kind of help protect against that, but it, it still is just just very flawed in other areas, poor side armor, stuff like that. So uh, this is my first, this is the A1 version of the MBT-9. Uh, basically what we got here is a big old thick plate on the front, 200 millimeters at 45 degrees, that gives us 282 millimeters effective. Um, now, you're probably asking, like, well, why did you do 45 degrees? Because I basically told you not to do that at one point. But uh, this is 200 millimeters thick, and it's a huge plate, so it's got a lot of health. So this thing can absorb a lot of hits. Since it is at a poorer angle, shells will hit it harder, and they'll take more health, but it's got more health to go around. And the main reason it's 45 uh, degrees is because it's just, once again, the plate's just huge. So if a shell was to hit it up here it would have the same armor effectiveness as uh, as down here. Um, but this is really important because since this isn't a really small plate, like uh, if we look over here on the SH-21, uh, we don't have this seam here. Um, yeah, because this is angled really heavy here, and this is smaller, and these plates are just really close. Like, this plate comes really close to the sticking out here. So if you were to shoot this tank right here, uh, you could actually compromise the frontal armor of this, even though it's ridiculously strong, uh, in only a few hits. You just have to repeatedly hit right on this seam. And I attempted to modify it by overlapping the bottom plate instead of having the top plate overlap. That's how it used to be, and it, it didn't work. This is still a major weak point, and it, it basically compromises this entire armor design. But this solves that by just doing away with that. It's got a bigger angle here, and you can't shoot the seam because it doesn't exist. If you shoot the seam, you'll just bounce off because you, you're shooting the, basically the same as the bottom. Uh, the, the glazes is uh, 70 millimeters sloped back at 80 degrees, so we got uh, well over uh, 400 millimeters of effective armor. Uh, turret is the uh, the classic I'm using now with those big old honking PHX triangles which have 200 health each and uh, that's 150 millimeters at about 65 or so degrees so that's over 300 effective that's fine. Um, the real optimizations that I have with this tank are uh, in the way the side armor works. Well, the uh, SH-21, the entire theory was put all the ammo in the turret, because then if someone penetrates your hull, they won't hit anything. Like, the, people look at this tank and they're like, oh, there's all this empty space, so you're wasting all this, but no. Um, when your tank dies, it's not usually because someone penetrates the front, unless they know some crazy weak spot. Um, it's because someone drives around the side, and then they just shoot you in the side, and they hit all your ammo and blow you up. So there's nothing in here, so there's nothing to blow up. That was the theory behind this tank, but it's it, it's very large for what it like. This could all be much smaller, so um, it's just not optimized very well here. Here we have that same sort of system. There's a much smaller space back here. Uh, same power plant, only this has uh, this actually has compartmentalization, which. Uh, the other uh, tank does not have, like the, the ammo at the front of the hull is behind a 25 millimeter plate here, so a small HE explosion in here will not necessarily cook off the ammunition. And we also have a pleak armor plates added because a big weak spot on these tanks is right here. You aim up here, your shell goes up, 
goes through the side into your ammo. So even if the ammo is stored at the back of the tank, you can still hit it. So uh, this tries to rectify that by first the big honky plates here. So this is 200 millimeters right here. You're not going to penetrate that. And if you shoot it farther back, you will hit a 100 millimeter applique plate, which is over 40 millimeters. So there's a very strong chance you'll bounce off at a strong angle like this. Uh, if you shoot it farther back here, your, sh your shot's just going to go straight through and not really hit anything, so it doesn't matter. And then inside, we have also have extra added protection, because an issue with the SH-21 was uh, someone who knows can... It, the sidearm is very weak, so even though there's a lot of dead space in here, if they know where your seat is, they can just shoot the seat. <laughs> so, even from a pretty strong angle, because this side armor is garbage, this is like... Pfft. Uh, 90 millimeters in multiple layers is not very good. So we have added internal applique armor, 50 to, uh, 50 millimeters. So uh, well, we we get a nice added buffer zone here. So if someone wants to shoot the seat from an angle like this, they have to penetrate this 50 millimeter plate, and they probably won't do that. Plus the seat's offset hardcore from the side. This side actually doesn't use an applique plate because the engine's here. This is the first time I've used the engine kind of as added armor. And this is about 50 millimeters in itself. Um, yeah, the engine will get blown up, but if someone's going around your sides, it doesn't really matter that much. Turret doesn't have that much ammo. We uh, fixed that in the next version. Turret ring, nothing really special about the turret. Uh, it does have kind of a cool little uh, function here. It looks really cool when it's running, but we'll show you that on the next version here. Okay, so uh, A1 version in uh, gun tests, this did not prove as strong as I wished it was. Even though it's a big thick plate, it just can't take that many hits, uh, partially because the angling and other things. So I decided to try something that I've always had an idea for, but it, it never quite made sense in my mind, and that's uh, if we look at the front, it does look different. This is the uh, M5A2, by the way. I'm really tired. I'm sorry, guys. And the reason it looks different is because this is not a, a S prop. This is like these big triangles in the turret. This is a giant solid prop. No joke. This is this entire thing is one solid prop. 400 health. Yes. I did, I don't even know. Like, I have not, I've shot this thing with pff, a lot of stuff, and it's hard to destroy. I mean, it, it's it's a 45-ton tank. You could probably blow it up with your 80-ton tank or something, but, like, this is, this is glorious. The main reason I, I always felt apprehensive about using a giant prop like this was because I, I just kind of had this flawed image of how it would work in my mind, like... Since this is 160 down here, I didn't really want my glacis to also be 160. But I wasn't really thinking correctly, because if I did have a prop that had 400 health and 160 armor, it would weigh the same as this, so I might as well have the glacis included in it, because otherwise it's just going to weigh even more. Uh, so with that 160 armor, lower plate is about 320 effective, it's at about 60 degrees, and the upper plate is at 75 degrees, which gives us a whopping 618 millimeters of effective armor. Um, the uh, the angle is like about five degrees different from the turret, and uh, that's the main difference with this A2 version. This hull is just I I've tested it and it takes a lot of abuse, and the turret is really strong as well with those big PHX plates. As props just it doesn't have any big triangles like that. That's why you kinda have to just deal with PHX. Okay. There's another video that I, I made and I should have uploaded before this where I experiment with another type of turret design that could make an even stronger turret than this, though it's got some flaws and it's just a proof of concept. So if you want to watch that I might put an annotation, otherwise you might have to find it. I'll have to think about it. Okay, so um, let's unfreeze this and just like just kind of show that cool matlet thing I pointed out before. See when when the gun goes up and down, this piece right here, the gun is actually on a pivot here. So the gun isn't like the axis on the gun isn't here; it's up here, and it pivots up and down. So instead of having this really weird clipping gun like sticking through here, it's got like an internal matlet 
and then it's actually uh, this is actually parented to it so when you move the gun up and down you get this really cool kind of effect which I really like that on this tank it's more just kind of for show but yeah that's it's cool <laughs> anyway the, the only other difference between this is we lost all that dead space in the front to put the ammo so we did have to move the ammo into the fighting compartment um, and uh, the, there isn't a plate here separating the ammo from the fighting compartment because we had to basically move all this back um, but I, I might add one in another version of this tank but right now it's not really a priority because the, ideally you should not be getting your fighting compartment pe penetrated anyway uh, and if you noticed in the A1 version there's a lot of dead space in the turret I moved that missing ammo up into the turret so it still has the same shot capacity it did before 30 rounds of 100 millimeter uh, ammunition the other one might have had like 31 or something but uh, yeah it's basically still the same amount of ammo it's just got more ammo in the turret now which is perfectly fine uh, anyway, let's let's just take this thing for a spin. There's nothing really special about the mobility, and especially nothing special about the mobility when you drive it off the cloquet. I saved it. <laughs> yeah, it's an easy drive if you don't crash into walls. It's, it's about 2 a.m. here. It easily drives up over stuff. Nothing special about the driving, but it's it's a it's a joy to drive this tank, and it also is a pretty decent looking tank as well. Has not been combat tested yet. Might not be the best uh, combat. The uh, the real revolutionary tank I'm hoping will be the MBT X, the MBT 10, but uh, this adds some of that extra stuff like that applique armor to help protect the ammunition, uh, compartmentalization, and that giant thick ass prop on the front that thing that thing does some work right there because this thing has taken a lot of hits <laughs> in tests anyway I think that's pretty much all I need to show you uh, I don't know if you really would have learned anything from this but just a little update on what I've been doing have a good one